Howdy and hi, everyone. Uh, we're back from our break, and this is this is the part where, for the most part, I as the DM get to step back a little bit uh, because this you need is to go like this. yeah yes. Tell me, tell me your plans, party, and uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we have uh, Professor uh, Professor Cypherius, who goes by Cipher, um, and might possibly be like a Mario Mario. Is he Cypher Cypherius? Uh, that is that is an unknown. But uh, we have the professor here sitting uh, in this meeting room here aboard the Repentless with uh, Celine and Mordecai. Possibly Bright. Again, she's in a quantum state right now. Um, and uh, I, have, I have instructions from... Dark Wolf as to what Norali is doing, though Norali is definitely not here, unlike Bright, who might be here. Uh, so we do not have a Norali for this. She's doing a, yeah. another thing here. So, all right. But anyway, I am going to sit back and offer the the chair or the floor or really any part of the ship that Cipher would like uh, to Cipher himself as we learn about things and stuff. So take it away, Professor. Why, thank you, my good man. <clears throat> so, then, my friends, you wish to know where I have been these past little while, is the way that I'll put it. Yeah. yeah. Then let yes. me be frank with you. I traveled the very roads of eternity itself. I'll put it to you like this. I went into the ether. And I got his attention. His attention. His attention. Shona Ruth? The one and the same. Right. He decided that he wanted to have a little chat. There's such a bit of path for me. That path is a path that I traveled for a long time. Probably of the order of several millennia, in fact, where I am sure I most likely went insane and became exceptionally sane. All at the same time. Do not ask for specifics, I do not have them to give to you. Just know that it's strange. At some Next. point in my tra at some point in my travels, I was joined by a woman in a yellow dress. She and I talked for a long time. What I was doing, why I was doing it, the people that I traveled with, among many other questions. She was a lovely young girl because I'm pretty sure I know exactly who Maddie is referring to out of character. Like that, uh... Eh. 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 <laughs> she seemed... distant, as if she'd been lost within that ether for quite some time. In this, though, an indeterminate amount of time passed, and I realized that I was no longer with someone. I was alone. Instead, I ended up standing in front of a tower. Mordecai, you would know, you would look very similar to the tower in Oiho that was drawing all the lightning. Except it was made of glinting metal and the black tendrils. That seems like a sort of Ruth MO. It was also the origin of all of the black tendrils that had suffused the very fabric of reality. The machinery. Yeah. Yes. Is that like a realm like Oiho? Oh no, much more important. Hmm. 
We are talking about the substrate of reality itself. The machinery under all the glitz and glamour of what you see before you. I'm sure you've seen it. The machines, the cogs, the pulsating flesh. And Salid's actually nodding along with this, like, yeah, no, I have seen that before. <laughs> yeah. Again, seems like Shunaru's M.O. According to Jade, oh, oh, all the cogs. Though this is a lot before Shunaru. The cogs and gears and everything are the factory seal on reality itself. As if what you're looking at is a completed product, and underneath is the machinery that makes it all work. Shona Ruth, as far as I am aware, simply gave, simply is given the ability to perceive such things. Not that everyone is ready to see it in any way, shape, or form. Now. <clears throat> I didn't know how to breach this tower. But it was as much shown a Ruth as I could find within the ether. After another extended period, I was let out of the ether. It had returned to me home. Home? To the Fall Fire Plains, specifically to the university, to my office. Because yes, I had an office. Still do. Mm. Everything had been overrun by this Eldritch corruption. But everything in it yielded to my presence. No one could stop me from reading and learning everything that was in that library. And it is there, through my research, that I learned. I could take the Repentless and make it an extension of myself. That I, of Shadaha Royal Blood, who could manipulate the very fabric of space and time as it is known, could use this to make the Repentless an extension of myself and myself an extension of it. Like Selter. Much like Selter, but different. Speaking of, where's she? Oh, she is. And he looks up. Around. That's a good answer. <laughs> That's a good answer. It's a very Selter answer. Is there anything that you'd wish to share with the class, Selter, before I continue? Uh, hmm. Would she want to add anything? <clears throat> um... From the fireplace, which if you recall, it's actually where she made her entrance last time, um, there's a bit of a, a smoke that pools down and just simply forms the image of uh, her of her snoot. Um, and uh, with a, a faint voice, uh, simply says, Now don't y'all forget, no matter what he tells you, 
The Repentless is mine. That includes him. And she gives a <laughs> she gives a green grin before the smoke very disturbingly crawls back up the uh, the fireplace. <laughs> oh, she is just a riot. <laughs> I suppose to each their own. Okay, so. Just to make sure that I understand what you're saying. You went to Shona Ruth to try and have a conversation with it. You got to a tower and then you went home? Yes. Without a word, without nary a word being discussed. But nothing need be said between him and I. But there is an understanding, there is an accord. You made he a is... pact. Oh no, not at all. He understands where the die has been cast. He has his, and I have mine. But you see, in that library I learned that through this pact that I have made with the Repentless, that I would be able to weaponize it as an extension of myself. That through the magic that I possess. We will bring the Sky Shuttle Leviathan to its knees. I mean, that's what Selter wants. That's what we want to be able to get to Shunneruf. Is that the right path? Sky Shadow Leviathan is its shield and reality anchor. We remove that, and we can start digging at the core. But of course, you may wonder to yourself, how might one go about creating such a pact? Where would you get the energy to fuel it, among anything else? I don't That's know how packs work at all, honestly, if I'm honest. Well, you were talking about a fusion of man and machine unlike anything you have ever seen before. I chalk it up to magic. Oh, this is more than mere magic, my friend. This is raw, undiluted power. And you sound like a madman. Oh, not at all. For you see, I must thank you and Selene, as you two, along with Bright and Norali, your fighting of Grimhilda von Arle and Lucius, and the release of Mercury from her prison, is exactly the catalyst that I needed to bring this plan to fruition. She thought me crazy. The cipher looks up. <laughs> but I don't think she my I don't think she minds so much that uh, I asked her for ramming speed. I had to persuade. But here we are. I am now bound to this ship much like she is, but the very the big difference is that in doing so, I have gained the ability to be what we need in order to see this world continue to flourish and thrive. Otherwise, it'll freeze to death by winter. More than that. You see, I found out that your actions disrupted a very delicate balance. Specifically, when you killed Orlans. That was the thing we did, yes. The 
powers that be were in a tenuous balance being tested very much by Shonaruth. Between him, Mercury, Weejas, and Shonaruth. You yeah, we found have... Weejas isn't exactly a god like we thought. What is a god or goddess but a being? Beyond mortal understanding. For to the common folk, at the apexes of your power, you two would be akin to gods. As would I. But I put it to you like this the energy from the destruction of Orlans, the incapacitation at the very least her fate is unknown but the incapacitation of mercury via the dunking her in the volcano and of course we just slowly but surely losing followers beings in reality upon which to do her bidding and he looks between the both of you that power had to rebalance itself somewhere. <clears throat> in, or in order to fight Shona Ruth. And where has it come but to me? So you're saying that you're a being now like Orlans? Like Mercury, like Weejas. Created through similar means, yes. Okay. I, I am I the it. I am the balancing point of the world. And the fur and the first pact that I have made is with Salta. I'm sure that if I exercised this ability, I would be able to make pacts with others. And you have the intention to protect the world for this, right? Of course. Shona Ruth constitutes an existential threat unlike anything ever seen before and most likely will ever see again. He is a cancer that must be excised. That we can agree on. And... He looks down. He doesn't look like he's looking at the ship. He looks like he's looking past the ship, like to the ground almost. There is a poor woman who has been tortured for such a long time. Who deserves her rightful place once more. And what woman is that? Do you suspect? You should know. You both are closest to her. Two of you all. That feels correct. It's the name she gave me. Well then, you know what it is you must do. I am here as a keeper of balance. She is life. We just is death. And I am but a humble chronicler of eternal events. 
to witness everything that has passed, will pass, and will come to be. So that we, as a people, do not forget again where it is that we come from. Yeah, I think that's something that, uh, that might have led to all of this. There's a oh. significant gap in knowledge when it comes to people's understanding of where we all come from. Oh, exceptionally. They seem to have forgotten about the Wild Mother. About many things, to be sure. But... Here is what I offer you now. I offer you the chance to ask any questions that you may. We have an understanding. We're on the same side. We both want to see the cancer removed out of the out of the worlds and. Oh yes, but I mean about anything else recover. about the world. I mean anything else about the world. I am a man who now has a literal library of knowledge at my command. Ask uh, your questions and you shall receive answers. If I have them. I don't know if I have any more questions, if I'm honest. We kind of understand the history of how these entities came to be. We understand what's happened and that Zuvu all got kind of forgotten about. She's given and given and given and nothing's been reciprocated. Not that she expects it, but things have not been she has given and given and given and we have taken and taken and taken. With nary so much as a thank you. I mean I believe if you're going to take a date, if you're going to make your date pay for your dinner, you should at the very least have the respect to remember her name. It's a valid point. Hmm. Now. And Celine's like, actually, I do have a question. Mm -hmm. The towers. Of Oiho, the ones being powered by Oiho's energy are going dim. Do you have any insight on that? Oh, most certainly. You are... The seat of power in Oiho rested with Mercury. You dunked her into a volcano. Kind of. Um... The I think she kind of more or less hit the deck when you, uh, when the Repentless came hurtling in, as Bright uh, showed us. It is a little bit more than that. Grimhilda was, a, Grimhilda was attempting to rip open a portal between Oyo and the Material. To try and explode the volcano, cause an extinction event of some kind, we suspect. Yes was done as a power play more than anything else but I would like you to consider something for a moment a seat of power and a portal being consumed by a blast of energy Think about it for a few moments. Energy cannot be created nor destroyed. Only transferred. 
something that Brett would be able to tell you. It was an Octian University professor, a, an old friend of mine who is long since passed, who came up with the concept. Energy flows from somewhere to somewhere. And that if it's not in Oihur, then things that are attempting to tap into that power source will find themselves wanting. You understand? I think so. Grim Hilder yeah. seemed to think Grim Hilder was upset when we were at the door of Weejess demanding recompense or something. Maybe, I don't know, that she was owed? The chances of that being Grimhild are actually quite low. I imagine that that could very could have very likely have been Mercury. Possibly. Grimhilder did explode into Mercury. At the volcano. Hmm. Well, I'd like she was like wearing it like a suit. As you had noted, Mordecai, Orlans himself had made notes about the others. About how he called them for aid. Mm -hmm. From your own writings. And Mercury entreating Weejas for help. If they were to join forces, I mean, all of them want Shona Ruth gone too, because they want. They do want Shona Ruth gone too, but the thing is, they also want to have control. Control of the world. Exactly. So that control is why her. Jo them joining up was never a thing that was going to happen for the simple fact of whoever, jo whoever joined up would very inevitably be stabbed in the back by the other. Okay. To take possession of our world. It's people. So is so Shonaruth... Shonaruth is killing the world. That's what's causing the the massive winters, right? Shona Ruth is killing her, yes, slowly but surely. Using his tendrils to strangle the life. When the body goes cold. So you understand now the gravity of the situation. Yeah. I, she kind of imparted that a bit on us too, in that she was dying. And... Someone has to help her. Someone does need to help her. In fact, I would say that it's exceptionally important that someone helps her. But that is why I am here. Otherwise, she'll go cold and the rest of us will die. Yes. But it is why I am here. 
Because unlike Orland and Mercury, I don't have a major desire to take control of this world. Don't you? No. It does not serve my purposes, and whilst Zelda would very much like the world to be hers... I was just about to say, there's almost like a, a purr coming from the chimney, or from the fireplace. To take the world for oneself means that there's no variety. There is nothing new under the sun if you are the sun. There is nothing new to try. No exotic things to take part of and take for yourself if there are not things to create them outside of your purview. You will take until there is nothing left, and then there will be nothing left to take, and you will find yourself <clears throat> wanting, but never being able to receive. It is a conversation that Seltzer and I have had at length. I'd like to think that she understands the concept. Oh my, you certainly did fill me with power, for sure. Cypher just raises a hand to his, uh... Raise a hand to his mouth. <clears throat> I dare say that I've been sated for the first time in a long time. Sully so just like, oh god, why? <laughs> just kind our of friends. Our friends with their innuendos, my dear. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I. It's just everyone today. I thought I was the flirty one. But it's just everyone today. All we need is no, all we need, all we need is one involving Norali and, and the, 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 the set's complete. Ugh. No, I don't even want to think about that. <laughs> now, now, she has a, she has a boyfriend that she cares about very much. If they, if they just... Yeah. If they decide to have fun together, so long as she's safe, I don't mind in the slightest. They probably have some jokes or innuendos. No, she's my baby sister. I don't want it to. <laughs> she doesn't do those things. <laughs> nope. <laughs> she's a woman first, Mordecai. And I mean, I should know. I have kissed her before. I don't know that you've ever told me that one. Really? I did, it, I did it in front of you! <laughs> oh. oh. Right. Right. Like, literally <laughs> there in front of It's been so long. Oh, it has. No, it definitely has. Head Cypher chuckles. Yes, quite so, between the dying and the being ported into different dimensions and everything else. Our concept of time and the amount of time that we've lived is... Probably wobbly. Tenuous, at, tenuous at best. I mean, look at Bright. <laughs> <laughs> and there's probably, there's probably a speak up of Bright of, Hey, I resemble that remark. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You always think you see her in the corner of your of your vision. You're just not sure if she's ever there or not. It's weird. Hmm. <laughs> well, as is bright, she is a she is a being of quantum probability. <laughs> Until she is truly observed, she is both there and not at the same time. There we go. <laughs> you just have to see her. <laughs> Schrodinger's bright. <Yeah. laughs> oh my! You have read the works, of Mr. Schrodinger. I mean, I do, I do, I do sort of like how he put a piece of, uh, how, how he put a piece of, of sunstone in a box with a cat. <laughs> because Schrodinger puns are the best puns, everyone. <laughs> now, I hope we have an idea of what we need to do. Yes, yes, very much so, and I think. How do we go about doing it? That's my question. Well. Follow. Because follow magic. 
magic doesn't necessarily affect Shrona Ruth. Well, you see, I had an idea about that. The only one who seems to affect him at all is Norlai. Yes, and I think I that's think, uh... because she's born of Zuviwo. My, you catch on quick. What an astute observation. Follow me. And he would make a gesture to, for them to hop up and follow him up onto the up, up onto the top deck. And he would follow. And he would follow. As would someone. I, I suspected as much when we realized that the wild magic flowers were 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 effective in whatever way capacity against Shonaruth. And that yeah. she was. So I suspected there was a link there that she was like born in the flowers, and that's where her power comes from, or that's or there or or something to that effect, some weird magic thing. I don't think I've ever heard of a sorcerer like her before. Well, you see, it's rather interesting that. And as he leads them out into the top deck. The raw chaos of her power comes from an unrefined form of innate magic that runs through the earth, well, through the land itself. Because that was my misspeaking. This... What we refer to as wild magic is something that you two possess a somewhat refined form of through your bond with her. But we've seen things and face things of Shunaruth design since then and we're still not effective. Because you're not thinking about it in the right way as I'm sure you've figured out. Well, given that her kind of focus obviously being things of a natural order I s suspect that natural things would be effective like the lightning that that uh, Norlai calls upon I can't call lightning like that though no because her pact is Quite a lot, it runs quite a bit deeper. Yours and Celine's, by extension, it's a song of devotion to the land who then gifts you power. Mm -hmm. Norlai is direct blood direction connection to the land itself. When she bleeds, the land bleeds. She is raw, unrefined energy, contained in a form and control. And as for me, I have recreated a pact like this, but with a different power basis. Also, with a more powerfully controlled version of such energies. For when the volcano erupted with energy, I took in the fires of hell. I took in the crystal twisted arcane of the Fae. I took in the essence of death itself. I took in the essence of the land. 
as the volcano is still a part of her. Mm-hmm. And I can bind it all into creating a new pact between myself and Selta, which results in the me that you see before you right now. So, you ask me, what plan do I have? And you see that he raises a hand and up from out of the deck, about six aside, running down the sides of the, or along the top, but down the sides of the, of the top deck. Mm-hmm. You'd see these... <clears throat> cannons of a form kind of slide up out of the uh, out of the deck I have designed the Repentless's outer facade to represent an Imperator class Shadahar battleship the only ones that exist in this day and age are the flagship of the Empire itself. Combine that with the fact that I have combined it with my space-time magic. And what, uh-huh. we, are lo- and what we are looking at here is a beast of unparalleled power and ferocity. And if you think that this is impressive, this doesn't even include the absolutely massive cannon underneath. Or Selta's Maw. Or any of the other little t- tips and tricks that I have installed now into the Repentless now that I have access. So what we are going to do, my dear friend Mordecai, is this. And you would see that Cypher turns on his heel and he walks up to you, putting his hand on on your shoulder. We are going to go to the crater. We are going to look the sky shadow, the Leviathan, directly in the face. And we are going to bring it down. In a volley of thunder and fury unlike which this world has ever seen. And Selene and I can't really do anything about that. The Sky Shadow Leviathan is not your major concern. I'm here to help you get to the core of the problem. You have the ability, you and Norali, you two and Norali together will have the ability to drive a stake through the heart of the cancer that affects them, affects this world. And what about Bright? Bright? (laughs) Oh my. As for our dear little gnomish friend, she also has a major role to play, which will become clear soon enough. But do you not answer my question? That is for her to know and for you to find out, possibly. But not right now. Do forgive me, my friend, I am waxing a little bit nostalgic, for I do love the smell of a space time rift in the morning. <laughs> right. And uh and well, you've seen, gravity you've seen like a pancake. pancake. Gravity is simply just another construct under my control. I and, would have thought uh, that gravity would have been something from her purview. She is a creator. We just is a destroyer. There must be someone who maintains and assembles. And that is where I come in. And he... Come on back inside. We'll get you fixed up with some refreshments and 
I will see if I can't contact Norlai and get her on board so that we may discuss things to do next. And he walks inside. And you would see him kind of flip up onto the roof as he does so. I would also suggest watching your step. And, uh... If you go to step inside after him, you'll find that the direction of gravity in this hallway has been reversed. Are you going to the upper deck? Or... Oh, we, we've actually gone, we've actually gone to the upper deck. Okay. We were just on the upper deck. Uh, now we're heading back inside to the meeting room. Oh, I'm sorry, gotcha. Alright. Now you're going back to the meeting room. Uh... I'm a little yep, now we're going back to the meeting room. And... Selene, as she goes to follow after Cypher, is like, ah! Poof! And slams into the roof. <laughs> oh. No, no fall, no fall damage. It's not far enough for any fall damage, but... Ah! You okay? I did warn... Yeah, no, just... Ow. I did warn you to watch your step. Now you're just being oh. a little shit, Professor. <laughs> Have you known me to be anything else, Mordecai? I, I echoes down the hallway as uh, as he disappears back inside. I imagine Ow. there's probably a, there's probably a snicker from Celta as. Uh... Oh, she, absolutely. As as Celine like smacks against the interior, there's there is a a, a mighty guffaw. <sighs> Yes, yes, I'm glad you're getting fun out of this. <laughs> as so silly as she goes through the hallway. Mordecai goes through the hallway, kind of landing on his feet on the on the the top of the ceiling. Kind of kind of pets Celine a little bit. And she's muttering to herself. All right, dear. Oh, <laughs> it's okay. You can mutter and curse at her and Nelvish all you want. I'm not going to bother. <laughs> now. <laughs> And as they sit back down in the, uh, they sit back down in the, in the meeting room, he kind of claps. DJ, my good man, I think it is time that we get some refreshments. Uh, he appears not too long after and, uh, has an assortment of various fruits and cheeses and, uh, some very cold, fresh water. Thank you kindly, Which... my good man. Which Mordecai would partake in. He gives you a wink. He knows. Mm. <laughs> now, so that's the plan, huh? That's the plan. And I feel like I should refill uh, the... The others on what's going on because I have been expositing for about an hour and I don't think I have another hour of exposition left in me all right as I have uh, I, I have gone through pretty much everything that I had in mind and, uh, Mordecai and I don't have further any questions. Nope. And he is, is so. I I suppose the last thing that are we just gonna set a course from here? We can, if you would like. Guns blazing, you know. Uh, what more is there to do? From here. 
Well, I, I don't would probably really have any affairs to get in order. I would probably tell your loved ones that you're about to go fight a massive, le massive leviathan in the sky, and that you might die. Yeah, there's that. As well. I mean, that's really the only affairs we'd have to get in order. I don't own anything. I don't have anything to leave anyone. Then, good. We shall wait and see, and get uh, Neralai up here, and we can discuss what will happen. Because, uh, I think it's about time that we really took the fight to Shunaruth. Just out of character. Hmm. I think it's time. Time. And, of course, Maddie has a massive smile on his face because as soon as we do that, uh, our asses are his. <laughs> yeah. Well... This is the last rush towards the the big showdown, so... Yep. We settled some things, we talked to some people, and then... Off we go. It's the next step. Oh. What about Loki? Ah, uh, yes. Loki? The matter of loki Adius. He's still Man. alive. Last we saw, last we saw, he was gorging up on black tendrils, like they were gonna burst out of him. He was growing in size. Yeah. And we kind of we couldn't take him with us. He wasn't he wasn't a willing participant in the teleportation that I did. And I couldn't force him. Hmm. So, he wasn't with us. The best we could do was kind of shelter him from the volcano's eruption should it have gone badly. Then he will be a loose end that we need to clean up. If he's turned into something, that must be investigated and dealt with. Norelai's not gonna like that. No, but considering you said he turned into some kind of worm thing... I don't know exactly what it is he turned into. A writhing mass of black worms. It didn't look good. Yes. <sighs> but his link to Grimhelder has been severed if she's dead. Yes, but he was a he was a pact holder with Shonaruth. Which means There might be certain provisions that he's giving as a as a pact holder with Shonaruth. We need to cut off every piece of every anchor that he has in this reality, so that we so that we may have a chance of casting him back out into the void. Jade was one of them. And he's already taken her back. Loki is another one. And therefore, there is a very likely chance that he must be destroyed. The pact has changed him that badly, there is no saving him. So 
Still have to try. I have to do something. There's gotta be way, some way to restore his mind or restore his body or something. Whatever's been corrupted. If Shona Ruth has taken it, then there isn't. Besides, then there has to be a way to bring him back, right? Mordecai, you know from experience that reality is rarely ever so agreeable. I know. But I went from being a vampire to being a mortal. Mm -hmm. What I am, I don't know. <laughs> well, Not I may have a... Anymore. I may have a... some interesting insights on that. And I imagine Cypher be having access to the amount of information does, would probably, he does, pro would probably be the one of the few people on the planet that, yes, actually has an idea of what Mordecai actually is. I may have some interesting insights on that for you. I'm all ears, I don't know. You are... Altered. We'll put it. I still look like me. Yes, you but... do still look like you. But who you are has been irrevocably altered when you left hell. Yeah. You didn't know who you were. You, you had an idea of who Mordecai Silverleaf was, but you didn't have an idea of who you as a link to everything. You didn't know who you were. And there's a very simple reason for that. As a vampire, you would consume the blood of many things. Uh, to partake of a thing is to know a thing. That's true. That's There's what uh, Lina does. You, you rebuilt yourself in the only image you had left in your mind to you. And his eyes look to Celine now. Hmm. Uh -oh. You rebuilt yourself in her image. I mean, when you put it like that, I, I, I don't, I don't know. She was, I mean, going from hell and coming back. Celine, you were on my mind a lot. And that f And that turned you into what you are now. I believe the turn that Bride used was 1% elf, 99% blank. <laughs> or 99% unknown. I have a new tattoo, I have a black streak in my hair. Mm -hmm. All of that kid. And who do you and who do you know that has black hair and wings? Well, I didn't know she did at the time. <laughs> you are one percent elf, ninety-nine percent angel, my friend. Or at least that's the term that's used. Angelus is Angelus is the uh, technical term. Angelus. 
But the 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 colloquial term is an angel. Angel. So angels are real creatures. She is living slash unliving proof. Right, right. I don't know why you're. Why don't, I don't know why you're looking at me and asking me. Are they real creatures? You're sitting right next to one. <laughs> <laughs> Mordecai, I, I, I know, I know that. The, the rebuild, the, the rebuild after our hell trip was kind of, kind of scrambled your brain a little bit. But your eyes didn't go that badly, assuredly. <laughs> no, but I... apparently, where, where, where do angels come from? Ah, that's now a that question. is a question. Like I, I don't, I don't. Like angels are supposed to be like the servants of the gods, right? <laughs> at least, well, at least that in is, mythology, that is, like that is how that is how they are posted up. Yes, but they like are angels eight. of death and things like that, you know, and like for Wijas. Yes, and well, Raphael was also an angel of death. He certainly became one. Technically, Wijas herself is an angel of death. The queen of the angels of death, in fact. Huh. Okay. You, you and I, you, however, you've held on to your spark of life. Yeah. So you do not require the consuming of time like she does. You don't require, you don't require the consumption of soul energy. You have your own to consume. But as such, you also receive a modicum of their visage. The wings from your back. There is not a... There is not a term for things that exist such as yourself. Uh, a working term that I have coined is God-touched. Or plain, or plain touched. That this, uh, this designation would also include those of in the infernal heritages, such as tieflings. Hmm. Is there a way to... For Celine to have a spark of life back? That she doesn't need to keep, you know, <clears throat> aging me. There is a way, assuredly. But the mechanisms of it are unknown to me, and it would most likely require the, s the same amount of, if not more, energy than what I used to create the pact. Celine has already died once. She is living on the bar. She is living on the borrowed time of others. The difference is, is that you had something that reanimated you. She does as well, but it is a different thing. It's the thing that cannot sustain itself without energy. What is the difference between taking taking parts of someone's life force and drinking their blood? Is there a difference? Mechanism. That's it. The intent is the same. Okay. But there are... 
there are two ways that I could point to you. First, she could e very easily take the time of other people. The other is that she could do exactly what I did. And maybe there is a third option. But, that would be the kind of thing that you would have to do. Sounds remarkably unpleasant, no? Well, it's not anything less than I expected. I expected that there'd probably not really be an easy way. If a way at all. But that's uh, maybe me being a little bit uh, selfish. Yes. By... By gods, I think he's beginning to see it. <laughs> what, futility in some things? <laughs> well, yes, but no, that's not what I'm referring to. Go on. You were servants I'm of the pissed. land. <laughs> well, you said it, not me. Yes, I'm not exactly the smartest tool in shed, Professor. Then allow me to put it to you simply. You are those you give from the land. You give to the land. You give your devotion. And he looks up at Celine. Have you thought about giving yourself? Like, just... Just going? No. I mean, like, in treating yourself, everything that you are, properly to the land. I thought that is what we did. You entreated devotion. I'm talking about something deeper than simple devotion. Everything you are. I can't say one way or another. I'm not exactly the most religious type. What that would mean, or what one would do to do that. Have a think about it. Because of the character, this is me kind of looking at Maddie and being like, I know Mordecai wanted to research looking into true resurrection, and if I was in your shoes, this would probably be the starting point of how I'd start that research. Yes. Yes. Mordecai wants to look into resurrection. <laughs> I'm not against the research. He would... Something to think of. Food for thought. And he pops a piece of cheese into his mouth, <laughs> chewing it and <laughs> enjoying its taste. I've always... Like, I can stop someone from passing on 
to the other side if I'm quick enough. Yes, you're taking but, your, their soul and stuffing it back into their body and then restarting everything. But what happens when that's been gone for too long? When the soul has passed to the other side? I don't know anybody who's attempted and succeeded. But is that... Is that just taking? Or is that giving them another chance? You could look at it one way as one way or the other. I would think. I mean, from my perspective, it would be giving that person another chance. Yes, but what do you take in giving that person another chance? People reviving from the dead is a... perversion of the natural order. You take from the natural order. Yeah, that's where it gets a little fuzzy. Mm -hmm. So, how do you frame things so that all you are doing is giving to the land? Now, the person who is animated, but otherwise dead, would give unto themselves give themselves unto the land to allow her to reshape them as she sees fit and put them back Like, what happened with me? What happened with you was an extension of will. This would be the same, but it would be going further. You would not be taking or enforcing through your own will, but willingly subjecting yourself to the will of somebody else. I would definitely think that it would be her choice whether that person... Whether they I, I, or not. I wouldn't frame it in a way that it's that it's that it's my choice. I would yes. frame it that it's her choice. And if she chooses not to, then that's the will of her. Then that's the will to, that that's the will of the world. Again, by gods, I think he's getting it. So I guess that's a question to ask, wouldn't it? You have he looks over to Selene. It is a question to ask, but she's currently a little spaced out, kind of deep in thought about this. Dude. Celine? Mm, yeah? What's up? Oh, uh, we were just kind of... Where were you? Just now. Not uh, us. Thinking. About what? About what you two were talking about. I didn't even think to consider asking. I, I I should have asked you first. Oh, no, 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 no. I just the thought about it. I'm, I'm not going to get into it right now. Okay. So, we'll talk uh, about it later, I guess. 
Yeah. Well, I guess our next step would be to finish tying up some loose ends here and then chart a course. Find Locadius first, yes. Yes, Locadius. And then. Definitely would think he'd benefit from something like this. If it were, you know. If he were kind of worthy of a second chance, I guess. I just hope that you don't. Your bubble doesn't grow too large to think that she'll find him worthy of that. Like I said, it's not my choice. Exactly right. And, uh. Just because I want it doesn't necessarily mean that it's gonna happen. Exactly. See, you catch on fast. Now, like I said, I'm not the brightest crayon. I'm a little dense. It's really easy to just take what you want. Immediate results and you get what you want. Yes, but who suffers as a result? Eh, yes. Details, whatever. No. Not details. <laughs> no, no intention of causing suffering. That's happened enough, I imagine. Yes, that's but, um, happened enough. Cyber does look at Celine. You. You're looking a little, uh. short. <laughs> that's right. On, uh. I was going to see on magical items. We have yet to get you fully kitted out in things that uh, would be appropriate to you, Celine. Well, then I think that is a thing that should be sorted. That is a thing that should be sorted out. If you're going to march directly into the mouth of oblivion, you might as well do it well equipped. Yes. Well equipped with items and things that would be incredibly beneficial. Now, Cypher, that's easy enough for you to promise other people's hard-won things. But I don't believe that Celine has ever... Oh, I don't know, apologized for leaving me to die in the desert? Let's be real, Sol Selter. You don't exactly want an apology, do you? I'll take a pound of flesh instead. So he's like, stop. Stop. <sighs> Salta. Come down here a moment, would you? Please. See if I can find an old Selter picture because I don't have. Uh... One moment. There we go. A green mist uh, comes down the, the chimney, crawls across the floor, and forms. Uh, in the shape of Selter in the chair here. Selter. Were you told what happened after that? What had happened after that faithful day? I'd like to think that I've been caught up. I was told that you died. 
I'm Wait, talking about are. before that. Yeah, it seems it didn't want to stick. But that's not what I'm referring to. Then speak up. Genuinely, I thought that the Aslandian military was going to kill you. And so, with the Repentless, when I dropped that, I thought of you in that moment. That faced with an inevitable demise, what way would you like to go? Alone? Or in a blaze of glory? Or everyone who had laid a hand on you would be sure to go with you? That if you were being dragged to the depths of hell itself, that you weren't going alone. That weren't your call to make. Maybe not. But quite frankly, if I didn't go, if we didn't go at that time, we all would have died there. And nothing would have changed. Another thing that was, that's been left off the record is that I kept your armor and things with me until such time as we reached the Dragon Graveyard. And it was there, under the bones of the Titans that, from our conversations from together I remember you wanting to become thinking upon them with some kind of reverence and adoration that I had buried your things there and made sure to place a memorial so that you wouldn't be forgotten she squints her eyes at you as you're as you're telling her this, M taking measure of your words. That is the whole truth. That is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I didn't want to leave you behind. But I wasn't I given didn't... that choice. I didn't want to leave you behind either. Trust me, I'm, despite all of, all of our all of the uh, all of the crap that we talked to each other, all the banter, I thought of you as a friend and comrade, and still do. So you're right. It wasn't my call to make in the end, and I'm sorry for that. Well, you said it. Well, well. Cypher, it does seem that some people can be redeemed after all. Isn't that right? She gives Cypher a, a bit of a wink. <laughs> It seems so, Silver. So I think... I think we should... we should suit up. We've got a brother to find, and then a leviathan to tear out of the sky. I might be willing to help you. Seeing as though that ultimately does go on to help me. That it does. And the easier we can make it come out of the sky, the 
clearer the skies will be, Selter. Yeah, well. I'm not just a creature of the sky, Mordecai. Not anymore. But I could be convinced to open up my treasury to Selene. If you then go ahead and why don't you go on and fetch my things as a show of good faith? From the graveyard? From the graveyard. Because clearly I ain't dead, now am I? No, clearly not. And I would love my collection to be made complete once more. You do that? On your own? Just like I had to survive and change and scrape and eat on my own. I think that we could then consider all of this bad blood washed under the bridge. And that might also give you some time to think. As I believe uh, the professor and I need to discuss a couple things. So he hops up. Well, what a cow, we're gonna need pickaxes and shovels. I wish I had a move earth cantrip. We do know someone who does have that. It's true. And uh, we'll leave the the, the two two uh, love birds to their to their to their uh, discussions. And Slade's like, she just leads gonna hop up and with a nod walk out of the room. And Mordecai will follow her. All right. Uh, as you two uh, as you two get up. Um. Selter Selter's eye you just feel Selter's eyes on you um I mean she can watch you anywhere on the ship but just there's this this piercing uh just you know she's watching you leave um and uh uh, before you, uh, before you go, and DJ's uh, out in the in the hallway. Uh, looks like he is waiting to escort you. Uh, she starts talking to Cipher about the the ship and a couple things. Sounds casual. Um, and the doors close behind you. <clears throat> All the bubble. I'd like to think that went rather well. I trust that your conversation was fruitful. Quite so. so. Well, I'll escort you back to the tower. I believe Gaspard has finished his tour of the ship as well. Oh, Gaspard took a tour. So... Where was your mind there a second ago, Celine? Under consideration of the possibility. I mean, it's never been done. It's not one of those things that it's. I don't know. I. I would hope, you know, it's wishful thinking, probably, but Mordecai.
What was a blessing is now a curse that I bear. If I have to bear it to the end, so be it. But to know that there might be a chance of freedom for me is... It's liberating. I mean, I... I mean, you know, I meant it. When I said till death to us part, it uh, kind of doesn't apply in uh, a lot of cases regarding us, but... Uh, what is death? What is... Yeah, exactly. What is that? What is that even? Well, I mean, I'd know better than anyone. I've died and come back. I've died and come back. I am, you are the shepherd, and I am the reaper, and together, we are become death, stronger than worlds. Destroyer of worlds? Yes. For in the end, it is not that we will take, but that the world itself will be granted its death. And that from the ashes, uh, we will give life to a new one. Simply the cycle of things. Death well, I hope the world life, doesn't die. And mm -hmm. life gives death. If it dies, it will be long after we are go long after the regular populace is gone. And the sun itself goes dim. And all goes cold. Well, as you converse through the halls of the Repentless, the door eventually closes behind you, leaving a shimmering, beautiful, sleek, metallic ship. Regal letters, the Repentless along the side. None, none suspect what's beneath the plating else you'd be swarmed by ships other than the onlookers that have accumulated around this place uh, in the time that you've been there. Because this is an impressive, unique ship. So there's there's gawkers and rubberneckers. It's opulent. Very much so. We must look like some classy individuals. Mordecai, we are classy individuals. And, I... and, she, and she literally z-snaps at you before turning on her <laughs> heels and walking further into the dock. <laughs> the Repentless pulls away from Gaspard's uh, airship dock here, uh, leaving you two and, and Gaspard, uh, who is uh, is out too. Gaspard seems to be covered in, like, mucus or something. Like, he's just... Like, he wasn't there when you were walking and talking, but... He must have taken a different route or was sort of squeezed through a tube to be ejected out too. Because it was it was his time. And he is just Ugh What? I need a shower. I and there's not even fun. hot water. Oh. Embrace Preston, the suck. Preston. <laughs> Celine just tossed it to the board again. Did you just tell him tell Gaspar to embrace the suck? Yes. Yes, I did. 
Prestidigi prestidigitation, Gaspard. Warm the water that way. You know that as well, right? I do, but... It... That seems so basic. Um, well, you gotta do what you gotta do. Or you gotta deal with it. He... A warm shower is basic! <laughs> He kind of uh, very carefully slurps down the stairs uh, with all sorts of squishy noises. Um, and uh, what we'll do is we will leave things here so that we can pick up with the crew back together, hopefully for this next session. You have a lot of things to think about. You have directions to go. Um, if you, by your own means, are willing to go to the Dragon Graveyard and get uh, Selter's things... She will open her treasury to you all. Uh, if you don't want that, I mean, there are magic shops in town. Um, so uh, it's something to consider. Um, but yeah, and then hopefully next week we will have both Fluffy and Dark Wolf joining us too. We'll have the gang together. Uh, Cypher, Cypher exists. Uh, Cypher's not necessarily going to be an on-the-ground member with you all, because he's a part of the ship as well. Mm -hmm. Um, so he might be able to manage, like, you can call him, think like Metal Gear, he can be a codec call kind of a thing. Um, and he, you might find a way to get him off the ship. Uh, but from DM to player, I'm not intending him to be a permanent fifth member of the Chroma Company. He does exist, he can help you. You might be able to get him to show up in a way if you're creative. Um, but for right now, it's the core four of you all that I'm planning on okay. moving forward. Yeah, no, he's just there as, a, as an advisory capacity. For me. Also allows me to be snarky as hell. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, I'm I mean, sure that Cypher would have something along the lines of a sending stone where we can just call him up if we need to, right? Uh, I'm sure Cypher can negotiate something with, uh, with Selter to, uh, arrange easier communications than having to go yeah. through DJ as, I guess, the secretary to both of them now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but hey, what better way to, uh, to help the bard get more, more levels of, uh, of college than a professor? So... <laughs> Uh, hopefully, hopefully, yeah. uh, DJ can improve uh, as well uh, as uh, as a as a bard in that regard. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, thank you, thank both of you for uh, for being here and for going through this uh, post battle start of the epic uh, run to twenty slash Shonaruf. Um, yep. We how quickly these levels go is going to be more dependent on the goals that you tackle. If you go headlong into it, you are going to be releasing this ingenuity, this power, this strength that you have as you handle harder and harder situations. Um, so I, I don't, I honestly don't know how many sessions we have left. Um, mm -hmm. At this point in time, there is a, a pretty much a, a hard deadline of, you have until winter if you want yeah. to, like, save the world. Now, you all yeah. are aboard a ship. You can just keep going further south and it won't affect you. And you can just live your life, you know, in a tropical equatorial region and not have to We work. made a promise to the world, But though. you made a promise to the world. And so you have a hard time. Lady. So that said, I don't mind time skips. If you ask for a time skip... Or like you know, hey, uh, so let's say that we c can we arrange a boat to go to the dragon, uh, the dragon graveyard. Sure, all it'll do is cost you time. Uh, but you you have established, you know, once you got out of hell, we said that we're gonna, I was gonna let you like establish a power base or contacts or whatever until uh, sixteen, or until the end of sixteen anyway. And then once we hit seventeen and beyond, that was it. Like there's a hard clock, and this is. Yep. Armies are moving, people are moving, the things are set in motion that are going to happen with or without you now in the meta. Mm -hmm. And I, I know I'm, this is redundant for you also. In part, this is for people watching who might not have 
caught that as well. But uh, as the DM of the game, everyone, this is now the last push arc. It's the last arc game. Um, This is the last arc. And uh, they're going to hit 20 and they're going to hit Shonaroth and we're going to find out what happens along the way. Um, So uh, you can do things more quickly if you have the Repentless available to you to take you around. And while the the relationship with Selter wasn't necessarily like cultivated uh, in particular, you do have Cypher and you you can't appeal to Selter's selfish like at least until the, the the Leviathan is taken down as a show of force and dominance. You have her, yeah. but you also don't have her until you return her things from the graveyard. But she said, y'all got to do that yourselves. So, you know, can you do it? I'm sure you can travel to the Dragon Graveyard and we'll, we can have a, a fun half session or whatever of it, of that encounter. Thoughtful things, remembering. Because I, I don't want to forget the little things, the remembering, the things along the way. As that's that has been a potent part of the story, especially mm-hmm. if we get to here. This place was made your own. This place has defied the grip on teleportation or you know instantaneous transmission that you all have. That that Shonaroth holds over everything else. Everyone else, yeah. But, this is our place. Yes. Where we have the power. And so I want you to reflect. I want you to look back on all the little clues or situations or the things that were said, the places that you've been to. And I want you to put that together and still enjoy it. So I I don't want this to just be a crunchy boss rush to the end. In a sense, that's kind of what it's going to end up being. But I don't want to forget that there's still story and that there is a world and a people that you've made a promise to. So Yeah. 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 Then there's also there's also like Celine's little hovel from the gra- dragon graveyard that we could always hovel. hovel. You you could make that your own too. Going but back there could be shack. double duty. <laughs> it's not a hovel, it's a shack. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, it's a shack. <laughs> But it, that's that's a that's another memorial place that that uh, it's that, in the dragon uh, graveyard as well. So yeah, Mordecai set up a little like put a ring. You did in that house as a little memorial to Celine. Yes, you did. Mm-hmm. Ah, hmm. A whole network of meaningful places you could safely transport to. I wonder. So, uh, Chroma Company episode, episode, uh, episode one, or well, session 126, remember. Ah, I don't know if I've used that one yet. So, that could very well be. Um, but yeah, all right. Remember, remember, the 5th of November. Uh, we are going to go raid Macabre Derek, who's actually doing Yay. some, some art that I had requested from our monster workshop last week. Uh, we do run a workshop Wednesday through Saturday, everyone, although y'all probably know that. If you're new here, well, now you do, so you can't say that you didn't. Um, so we made a monster that was named after actually a member of his community. Uh, and we had conceptualized what this monster might look like, and he is currently drawing the basic idea. I'm going to turn that idea around in our Discord and make a fun little, like, event where I'm going to ask you all, what stats would a monster that looks like this have? And then sort of like our coloring book event, I'll give out a prize. Or prizes if there's a lot of people uh, who make a uh, who make a, a monster from the picture. But anyway, I'll talk about that on Discord. I'll talk about that on Wednesday. We're, this week we're reviewing the new Unearthed Arcana and all of the extra planar races uh, that are a part Spell of Java. it. Spelljabba! Yes, I'm Spell Spelljabba! Spelljabba! <laughs> Uh, but for now, I will see you over in Derek's Discord. Or, well, uh, in his Discord too. Um, you'll see a di- probably a different side of me. But uh, <laughs> oh I'll, yeah, I'll, no. I'll, I'll see you in Maddie his channel. The dark. Yeah, after the dark. on tilt. <laughs> the Maddie of the darkness. NSFW Maddie. Um, but I'll, I'll see you all in his bad. channel and in Discord, uh, hither and thither. Thank you very much for hanging out with us, and I hope that you uh, enjoyed tonight's session. Be well, everyone. Bye. Bye.